Senator Marker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Secretary uh, Palmer, I want to uh, raise uh, the question of nuclear weapons uh, with you in the context of Turkey. Um, we now know from public statements, including the President's, that uh, there are 50 nuclear weapons um, in uh, Turkey at the Insulik uh, Air Base that are uh, American. They're part of the NATO defense. Uh, on September 4th, um, President Erdogan said that he cannot accept Turkey's lack of nuclear weapons. So my question to you, given this profound ambition which he uh, stated, did Vice President Pence raise that issue with Erdogan in his conversations with, uh, 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 with him um, uh, just last Thursday? I have no information to that effect, Senator, in terms of, of the specifics of the, the Vice President's conversations with President Erdogan. Um, we have, of course, seen uh, President Erdogan's statements with respect to, to nuclear weapons. I would underscore that Turkey is a party to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. It has a, a comprehensive safeguards agreement in force with the IAEA. It has accepted an obligation never to acquire nuclear weapons and to apply the IAEA safeguards to all peaceful nuclear activities. Yeah. Given, uh, that's given an his, important commitment. Given his conduct over the last two weeks, I think that we should uh, consider that all of those documents are no longer relevant in terms of how he will be uh, operating. Have any uh, top-level U.S. officials had conversations with Turkish government officials since he made that statement about his ambition now to procure nuclear weapons? I, I know of no such conversations at uh, the highest level, Senator, but uh, I would underscore that, that neither have we seen activity that would be consistent with those aspirations. This is uh, so, a political position. So you're an expert in this region. Do you think that the uh, United States negotiating with Saudi Arabia um, uh, on a nuclear program for Saudi Arabia uh, could have any impact upon Turkish ambitions to also be able to obtain the nuclear materials which are needed for a nuclear weapon, given the fact that the Saudi prince said uh, that they may develop nuclear weapons. Do you think that that is a factor in what is going on at this particular time in Turkey? I, I, I don't want to try and, and read into uh, the motivation of the, the president of Turkey, but, but certainly Turkish authorities pay considerable and very close attention to developments in their, their region, yes. I, I would think so, and I think that would give us an additional reason why we have to be very careful about any enrichment capacity which we would allow the Saudis to be able to possess uh, on their own territory, because that would, without question, trigger in Erdogan a demand that he be given uh, equal privilege to do so. And, uh, and, and from my perspective, I think that he's already emboldened dramatically uh, Erdogan in this direction. He capitulated to uh, Turkey uh, only weeks after Erdogan had made his nuclear goal public, and we just walked away from the defense of the border in Syria. He failed to apply mandatory sanctions for Turkey's purchase of a Russian air defense system. Uh, he openly undercut our other non-proliferation sanctions, stating publicly that as president, he wants his own Treasury Secretary to let North Korea sanction evaders off the hook. So all of this is pointing in a very bad and dangerous direction. Uh, Turkey and Saudi Arabia are in a deadly um, escalation from my perspective, and I think the president is setting the stage for a very bad, even bigger problem uh, coming down the line in a very short period of time. And if I may just turn to the 50 nuclear weapons that we now have stored inside of Turkey, I think it's pretty clear that if we were making a NATO deployment decision today that we probably would not be putting 50 of our weapons in uh, Turkey. Have there been conversations with the State Department, Department of Energy uh, about a removal of those weapons from Turkey? Uh, respectfully, Senator, I, I'm not in a position to talk about nuclear force posture at this time. You're not able to do so? Not able to do so. Uh, it's probably a, a question that would be most appropriately directed to the Department of Defense. Okay. I appreciate that. And, um, uh, and Ambassador Jeffrey, I, I thank you for your service. Um, and I think in each instance where you are not consulted but asked after the fact how do you handle the situations that has been created, 
throughout your career without having consulted you, that you come in and do a very good job after the fact. I just wish that with each administration that they had listened to your advice uh, at the beginning because uh, uh, <clears throat> you, you should always try to uh, start out where you're going to be forced to wind up anyway. And that's why we have career diplomats just to explain to administrations uh, the message that they are creating. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Senator Graham. Uh, I'd like to uh, echo what Senator Markey said about my admiration for you, admiration, uh, Ambassador Jeffries. Uh, we have to play the ball as it lies in golf uh, and foreign policy. 